Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. In the past few days, we witnessed gener Generation Z on the streets. In their numbers, in their strength, they went fearless and determined to have their voices be heard by the powers that be because they are saying that for the longest time they have been ignored and decisions are made on their behalf. They are also saying that they have always been victims of uh, political machination. They have always been misused, set up against each other in every election. And they have been promised quite a lot of goodies that never come. And they are saying that this time around we must be on the table where decisions are being made. Of course, they were lamenting and protesting against the finance bill 2024 that passed in the second stage it is now in the committee stage and with the numbers that the kenya kwanza has this bill will pass just like the finance bill 2023 passed while on the street they also lost one of their own rex kanyike may his soul rest in peace that was very brutal for a police officer to fire bullets at, at innocent demonstrators who only had a weapon. And the weapon was their voice, a placard, and a bottle of water to wipe away the tear gas that they were, they were throwing in, in, the, in that crowd. Now, the question that many are asking is, what next for this generation? They were on the streets. They... They, they, they ensure that their voice are heard. Raila Dinga has commended them and Raila said for the first time, I feel like a proud father because my, my children and grandchildren are there on the streets. Kalozo Musioka said, my heart was melted when I saw them telling the government that we're not going, we're not going to allow you to pass this bill because it's not good for us. And Gadoni Mushomba said, my daughters and sons, you have made me proud. So most of these politicians really love it and they have congratulated them. But the question is, what next for this generation? There is a general feeling if you look at social media because that is where they communicate. On Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, this generation loves social media. And there is a general feeling that number one, Ruto is a one-term president. That is what they are saying. They are saying that this regime has overlived its mandate. William Ruto arose to power by lies and deceptive means. And they are saying this is a one-term president. Number two, they are saying that they need to have one of their own at the ballot. And if you look at the names that are being mentioned, they are saying that they will either support, you know, there, there are suggestions, Babu Wino, Timbarati, others are saying, let us support Baba for the, for the last time, let us unite together for Baba. Others are saying, Fredo Kengo Matiani, and others are saying, Okia Mutata. So names are there. And they are saying, if we unite together with the millennial generation, we, 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 the same, they form more than half of the population of Kenya. And with that, they agreed that they must have one of their own. One of their own means that they approve him and they make it clear that as we go to the, the, to the polling station, our president will be so and so. So that all those others who are coming to test waters, all those others who are coming to interfere with the mathematics are told clearly that we have our president. Is it early to start talking about 2027? That is the question. It is not early. In fact, if you fail to prepare, you fail to succeed. They say my payment your best. And so what must the Gen Z and the millennial generation do. Because all along there have been attempts to emancipate ourselves from the cruel hands 
of the government of status quo, but we have never succeeded. The only time people voted overwhelmingly and their voices were heard and respected was in the year 2002, I mean. In the history of Kenya, that is the only election that has never been performed. Others have been shambolic. In fact, they have been mere rituals. They have been formality. There has never been any election. And the, 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 these two generations must unite together. And when they unite together, they must understand that our elections are always being interfered with by the external forces. The U.S. is our number one enemy when it comes to our elections. Meg Whitman pitched camp in Bomas during telling and verification. And it was like, what, for heaven's sake, is an ambassador doing in our, in our, in, in, in our telling center? He's, she's a visitor here. And you know what happened? And later, he spoke very proudly, telling us that that was the, the freest election in the history of Kenya. So the Gen Z and the millennial must demonstrate and make it clear to the USA that you must let us elect our president. Because even if people unite, if they don't voice their concerns, and kick away the external forces, then this will be an exercise in futility. Their numbers will yield no fruits. And so number one is to kick out and ensure that they block the external machination. If America wants a government that they want to work with, if they want a president that they want to work with, let them wait for us to elect a president, then they come. We see if they what, what, what they want is good for us. Because there is a, a, a new world order where the, the, the LGBTQ is now being promoted even in social media. They want GMO. They want contracts. They, they want someone they can misuse. And that is why they want to procure for themselves a, a, a president and they want to force it down our throat. So this is something that they must do. That is why you see we are so much listening to the IMF and World Bank and U.S., we must block them. Number two, we must unite across the political divide, across the ethnic tribes, without, without looking at Uyuni Jaluum, Kikuyum, Kisim, Kamba, Mluya, Nanini, Nini, Izo. And I love the fact that when the Gen Z went to the streets, they never went there on their tribal cocoons. They went there in unity and they had a common enemy. A stubborn government that is not listening to them. A stubborn government that is passing laws, passing the finance bill 2024 against their chagrin. So we must cut across our tribes if they want to win. Number three, they must avoid being bribed and being misused. Because many a times we have allowed politicians. Right now there's a lot of corruption and wastage. Izo pesa wanaweka tu. Ikifika 2020. Six up to 2027, they will be giving us back our money that they have stolen, a thousand. And you are given a thousand, then you vote someone who does not even care about you. Election is just one year. Then you have to live with this person for a, a whole five years. So we must refuse to be bribed. The day we tell of our politicians, keep your money, because you better ignore that money, then in the coming five years, you have your taxes being used well. The problem why the Gen Z's on the street is because decisions were made on their behalf. Their parents voted. Their parents allowed the political class to cheat them. And some of them who voted also allowed the government, the, the, the powers that be, to wink them. So we must avoid to be divided along tribal lines, political lines, and to be bright, there must be unity of purpose. The generations must go and register as voters. And they must turn out in large numbers during voting. Because we've had problems where people don't care. Yes, they want change, but they don't want to go through the process of change. People must register as genuine voters. And they must come out in large numbers and vote wisely. Vote wisely. 
when they do that, they must guard their votes so that we don't vote and we let politicians tell us that we will guard the votes. Then later, we realize there were loopholes. We must guard those votes. And when we vote, we must tell the IEBC that we are not going to allow any kind of rigging. When people stand up, we must stand firm and tell the IEBC that we cannot allow, we cannot accept a bungled election. When that happens, then I can assure you that there will be change. Otherwise, all these street battles with the police might end nowhere. Who do you suggest should be the next presidential candidate to face William Root, especially when the Gen Z and uh, the millennial generation team up together and they say, we want to go for it, we want change, because obviously it's going to be a battle between the forces of change and the, vo the forces of status quo. What must we do to ensure that the blood of Rex Kanyike does not go in vain because he lost his life while fighting for us. What must we do to make the parents happy? We must vote wisely. We must have one of our own. People must vote and kick out this government in an, 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 a democratic process. And if that is very far, then people can always voice their concerns in another way. Right now I have seen what is trending Occupy State House. It might not be very easy but it has happened before in Sri Lanka. I see this political class getting scared and they're panicking that this could be an Arab Spring. Yes, it can, because when you start fighting people on the streets, people are only but exercising their, their, their democratic rights. Then you are, you, are de you are radicalizing them and you're telling them, I have declared a war. History has proved that when generations rise up, even the bullets cannot stop them.